Arts and Culture events presented by Chuck Wyke, Community Relations Manager. Good afternoon, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Oshigan, Commissioners and City Staff. Uh, we've had a very eventful month thus far at the uh, library. I'm going to show you a few pictures of what's coming and what's, what's already happened. Um, First slide, uh, something you'll know about. The Adams Square Mini Park gas station has a new uh, installation. It's from an artist called Jana, her name is Jana Charl. Uh, this exhibition will be up through July 28th, and she's already talked to the uh, Adams Hill Neighborhood Association about uh, an event in late uh, June. So we're trying to coordinate uh, her work. She wants to have maybe people at the library, visitors, or visitors to the reception to come and do a little bit of work, and she will add it to her installation down there at the park. Um, upcoming, actually, tomorrow night, Landscape of Memory. Uh, this is uh, uh, a, a really a, a fabulous exhibition at the downtown central library it's uh, in our new reflect space it's also out in central park uh, and it's also in one of the hallways um, this is Ara Oshigan's work eyewitness uh, the opening reception again is tomorrow night Friday May 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. there are a number of events planned around this am I right chair Oshigan Yes, yes. I uh, urge the public to come out tomorrow night from 6 to 8. We're going to have different types of music in Reflect Space in the library, Acoustics, acoustic work, uh, and then actually out in, in, in the installation, there's going to be, there's going to be live music. Uh, and there's a picture of a lot of the volunteers who helped us put it up. It takes a village, and, and I have to mention it's not my work. It's a, it's a group of us with Levon Parian and Vak, Tomasian, and myself leading the way, but... It does take a village to put up something like this, and I want to thank the, all the people who helped us make it, make it possible. And I also urge the public to come to see the Reflect Space exhibition, which is sort of a unique kind of treatment of witnesses and remnants of the Armenian genocide with um, information and um, actual quotations and, and photographs by a U.S. consul who was in Armenia at the time and who saved a number of Armenians, and as well as one of the um, Armenians who were saved is photographed and in that space. So there's a very interesting kind of conversation going on in that space, as well as work, brand new work about Arshil Gorky reflecting on his life as a survivor and as an artist. So I urge the public to come and see it all. Great. It's, it's remarkable um, for us uh, to have this kind of exhibition that takes up quite a bit of our new space. It's, it's really fun. That's, that's just the beginning of, of more of those exhibitions. Um, uh, could I say quick? something? And it's also beautiful at night, too, because it's lit inside. That's very important. Those people who can't make it during the day, they can come and see it at night. It's as glorious as it is in the day. Indeed. Uh, next week, uh, Wednesday, May 24th at 7 p.m., we will have an author, uh, well-known L.A., Los Angeles-based author and speaker Lisa Napoli, who's going to talk about her book about Ray Kroc, and particularly Joan Kroc, uh, Ray's wife. Uh, the subtitle of Ray and Joan is The Man who, ma who Made the McDonald's Fortune and the Woman Who Gave It All Away. Uh, this is the Friends of the Library's annual meeting, uh, so they have a lot of uh, uh, surprises. You'll get to meet a lot of the, the people behind the scenes that put on a lot of our author events and raise money for uh, things like children's programs and so forth. So that's next week, Central Library. Um, among the things they do is bring authors to the library. David Kukoff is coming on Thursday, June 8th. He has a book about the 1970s, uh, particularly in Los Angeles. Uh, so he'll be a lot of fun. He's got a panel of some of the uh, authors who helped him with this book. Um, we're also working with MONA, the Museum of Neon Art next door. Uh, a really nice partnership to put on a series of film noir movies with little discussions at the beginning. Uh, 
the first one will be on Saturday, June 17th. They'll show The Black Dahlia. Uh, the films were chosen in part because of the use of neon and light in the movies, but also some of the movies were actually filmed or based in some way in Glendale. So that's uh, in June. Uh, Brand Associates uh, fund a dance series, a music series. Uh, the dance series uh, continues this Saturday, May 20th, with the Invertigo Dance Theater. That's at 1.30 on Saturday the 20th. Um, there's also a, a real fine program, uh, the LA Opera Young Artist Program. They're coming on May 23rd. We expect that's going to be a big deal that's going to be all Mozart live music in the recital hall at Brand Library. Uh, following up, the next part of the dance series will be a group called SALT on Friday, May 26, 7 p.m. And then the Brand Associates also fund this music series. So we have a violinist and pianist on Saturday, June 3rd at 2 p.m. Uh, following up, later in June, the Encore Saxophone Quartet, June 17th at 2 p.m. at Brand Library. Be remiss if I didn't mention that there is a call for artists out there. It's an artist opportunity for uh, the 45th annual Works on Paper, uh, sponsored by the uh, Brand Associates. Uh, this one will be juried by Leslie Jones, and Leslie Jones is the curator of prints at the LA County Museum of Art. She specializes in modern and contemporary works on paper. She's been with the museum. Uh, MOCA since 2005. The deadline for this call is June 2nd, and so you can find all the information at brandlibrary.org. Um, uh, something you'll know a lot about, the fourth year of the uh, uh, Brand Plaza series, out, outside Friday nights from June through August. Uh, this starts up on June 2nd. I'm really excited. We've got a, a really great lineup. Uh, there's a jazz band to start out, a balalaika ensemble, um, uh, a really good uh, jazz singer, and uh, uh, Cafe Fuego. It's kind of a Latin jazz group. That's the month of June on Fridays. <clears throat> oh, sorry, one more. Tango Tico, kind of a contemporary tango group. Um, a new series uh, sponsored again, by the Arts and Culture Commission with funding from the Urban Art Fund, is 222 East. This is a program Saturdays at 2 p.m. at the Central Library outside. So we now have a, a lovely performance area, a couple of performance areas, but we're going to put bands, groups, singles, maybe poets, uh, maybe spoken word. Um, we had live auditions that... Uh, Commissioner Dara Hovanesian participated in. She can speak to that if she wants. She saw a number of groups come through the doors. We had, what, about 30, uh, 30 to 40 that auditioned. Uh, from that, we've, we've picked 15. And then uh, actually we're looking at a couple of the groups that were alternates for the brand series. We're going to try and get them in there. But the, the series will start on June 3rd. Joellen and the Gypsies, kind of a folk group, Manji and the Tips, Jazz, R&B, the Tone Gypsies, uh, Rock and Roll, uh, June 24th, Mike the Poet. Um, and he is uh, maybe recognizable if you uh, know anything about the Neon Art Museum. He does a lot of their bus tours. He's the, the guy talking on the bus a lot, but he's a good poet. He's been around uh, quite a bit in LA. So that's 222 East. Um, so I told you we were having a lot of fun at the library. These guys look pretty happy. Uh, there's Cindy and Jay and some of our staff, city staff, contractors, architects, getting their picture taken because uh, we opened the Central Library on May 1st, reopened it to the public. Uh, we had festivities, I guess you'd have to call them. Look at those balloons. There's a, just scads of people there. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting. That's council up in the front row along with Cindy uh, and some city staff, um, friends of the library, the newly formed um, Glendale Library Foundation is in the back along with an architect and some contractors. Uh, I think I even see Sharon there off to the left. 
Ah, there she is right in the middle. <laughs> this, is, this is a photo of the uh, key group from the Glendale Library Foundation. So we had speeches. Thank you, Cindy. Good one. Uh, we had uh, characters. Uh, as a lot of the entertainment, well, all the entertainment actually was sponsored by uh, uh, the Arts and Culture Commission. So our staff dressed up in various costumes. Uh, had a good time. The kids liked it. There's a nice wall of recognition for the foundation with some of our staff. Um, we have a, a bevy of new computers, Macintosh and PC, all through uh, the main floor just for the public. So this is not a computer lab that you have to sign up for. You can walk right up and log on. Uh, we've got a great Wi-Fi system now. It's, it's fast and it's uh, robust. Uh, this is actually the guy that's in charge of it, Kevin Sarian. Uh, more pictures. From that day, that that uh, I, I've shown you pictures um, before of this space, uh, but never, you know, having it all filled. There's still more to come. There's more furniture and so forth. But I, I can tell you that this came together very, very quickly at the end, and uh, I'm very happy. Uh, wow, look at that. Who's that? Our <laughs> own, our own Yvonne uh, Martinez. Uh, uh, the mariachi divas performed outside. Uh, that little girl is there. The, one of the mariachi divas said there was a woman in her late 90s who, who came and danced a little bit out, outside. We didn't get her name. She said she had a good time. Uh, we had a band. At the end of the night, uh, or close to it, uh, uh, Jay Walmhop, one of our staff and myself, were there for a performance from John Reynolds. He's a local painter and musician. And he put on a little show right inside the library uh, about 7 o'clock at night. That, that pretty much ended the uh, day's festivities, but we were, we were tired. Uh, uh, we have a computer lab. Again, this will be open to the public. Uh, and we will also give workshops and classes in there. Um, that little device on the left of the computer screen is a 3D printer. So they come in various sizes, but they, they print objects. Uh, the, there's, well, there's Ara in the middle, our staff member Kevin Sarian on the right, and that guy on the left is the California State Librarian who came down to visit. Uh, he wanted to take a look at the library and see what we were doing. He was enthralled by a number of things. Uh, Ara and his wife gave a, a great tour of Reflex Space. He was really, really taken with that. Uh, he also enjoyed the, the 3D printing, the recording studio. Um, so we're, we're back. We're open for business. Uh, we had a lot of kids that day coming up, going down the stairs. We had a great time. So here's, again, the landscape of memory, the open reception. Uh, I welcome everybody to come out tomorrow night from 6 to 8 p.m. We'll have live music. There'll be uh, some refreshments. But most of all, there'll be great stories about what this art means to so, so very many people. Um, finally, our service hours uh, are there, and you can call us at 548-2021. We'll be happy to uh, direct your call somewhere, answer a question, or give you a tour of the place. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chuck. Any questions, additions? No, just it's fantastic. Especially, I am sorry you didn't have any picture of the spire. Yeah, I'm so impressed with the spire. Yeah, and all the rest. It's so phenomenal. It's just, it's like a dream come true. It's beautiful. The whole it's a reading, space. It's a reading spot. It's not like the I know. other kind of spire. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> reading spot and the view and the space. It is unbelievable. It, it's a pleasure it really to have is, this yeah. kind of a space for people who love books and they love. Uh, uh, intellectual topics and ideas. Did, we, they didn't talk about that museum, small museum part, did we? Reflex that we space. have that room. That's reflex space. That's, reflex, that's called reflex space, okay. yes. Reflex space, beautiful. Everything, everything about this library is beautiful. It's just, uh, everybody needs to visit. Yeah, I would, just, I would just add congratulations to Cindy and the entire team. Uh, I grew up in this library, so to see it, I mean, reimagine is definitely the right word for it. 
uh, just That's everything right. from the upgrade technology to just the remodeling. Uh, it's much more modern space. It's so welcoming with just the open floor plans. Uh, really, really remarkable job to everybody. Um, I'd like to add that we um, have rebranded the library, Downtown Central, and it's a branding that has caught on quickly. We've uh, developed a new logo, um, and we're working on a tagline to go along with that. Uh, but we do believe that our new name, Downtown Central, is very indicative of what we are and what we're about. Yeah, next. Item 3B, Glendale Art, Glendale Arts Events, presented by Jess Castillo, Special Events Coordinator. Hello, how are you? Good to see Hi. you all again. Uh, thank you, commissioners and city staff. And before I begin, how do I use this thing? Do I just hit this button here? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So thank you again. And uh, as you may recall, my name is Jess Castillo. I'm the special events coordinator at Glendale Arts. So thank you for your time today. Uh, I will be talking about the Open Arts and Music Festival and where we are as we enter our second year. So before I move forward, I wanted to acknowledge and again thank you for our seed funding for getting this project started. It's been an incredible process. We're happy to move into our second year and this is why we're here today to share updates with you. So that being said, uh, Glendale Arts is a nonprofit private, uh, private arts and entertainment organization based here in the city of Glendale. And we're dedicated to providing economic support for local businesses, artists, and arts organizations within the city of Glendale as well as offering quality and affordable arts and entertainment events. So um, moving to our second slide. To give a brief overview of the Open Arts and Music Festival, it's a free family-friendly event that's this year on Saturday, September 16th from 2 to 10 p.m. in the downtown Glendale area. And it's an event that highlights emerging artists and performers while also supporting local businesses and organizations within our community. And this year, it's presented by Glendale Arts and the Downtown Glendale Association. Each year, the festival has a theme. And this year, our theme is collective and really thinking critically and creatively on how we can better build our community in a collaborative way. 2017's festival will offer live music performances, a kids area with a dome garden, face painting, a rock climbing wall, and many more activities to come featured restaurants on Brand Boulevard and in downtown Glendale, an arts market with free artist-led workshops, public art activations such as a zine library inside the Alex Theater kiosk, and a craft beer garden, plus so much more. Our current 2017 sponsors and partners include the Downtown Glendale Association, SoCal Gas, Briard Beer Company, Dub Lab, Brand Library and uh, now Downtown Central um, with regards to working out uh, activity to highlight your maker space, uh, Grand Performances, ESM Productions, Street Food Cinema, Glendale Beeline, and the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. And this is where we are today. We, we're looking forward to all the partnerships that are still in conversation. So. After last year's event, we did uh, extensive surveying and polling and really figuring out, OK, we had our first year. What worked? What didn't? How can we change it? And how can we make this a better, more exciting event for all of those who attend? And so these are some of the changes that we've uh, made. We have a new location. We'll be located directly on Brand Boulevard be between Wilson and California Avenue. And the benefits of this is increased visibility and ease of access, direct support of our local businesses and restaurants, and we're situated right in the heart of downtown Glendale. Some other things that have changed is that we've reduced it to one main stage, so we've eliminated our second stage, which has supported our uh, supported reducing our production costs and our talent costs, and that way we can redirect those funds to other critical areas. Uh, last year, we had a a vision of having a family-oriented event that during the day would highlight kids and during the evening would highlight adults. And that didn't quite work. Uh, a lot of families came up to us and said, hey, you know, I had a great time with my kids, but once the sun went down, there were no activities for them to do. And so we really took that to heart. And this year, we've expanded our kids area with dedicated all day programming. So it doesn't close, it stays, and we're having workshops all throughout the day. And our public artists have actually 
design an entire program specifically for that as well. Um, some other things to note is that we will have a new beer garden uh, inside the Alex Theater forecourt and again looking, uh, working with local bars and restaurants on Brand Boulevard to highlight their services, drinks, etc. So uh, one of the things that we're changing this year is how can we better work with our vendors and local businesses who are already within our community. One of them is increasing our arts market opportunities. By lining vendors along the street, we've uh, made room for 22 total arts market vendors who can offer a range of free workshops and activities to our community. We're growing our partnership opportunities and on-site activations with local businesses and organizations, a lot of which are still in the works right now and are pretty exciting, I have to say. Um, and then we're also limiting outside food vendors. I mentioned this previously that we're partnering with restaurants, and that is our core food um, options. We're not really bringing in food trucks. We're not really bringing in outside vendors. In fact, we're doing the total opposite, which is we're partnering with all the restaurants on Brand Boulevard, and then anyone who's not immediately on festival grounds, we're creating a local business, a local business directory with the Downtown Glendale Association where you'll have a downloadable map access to their app and coupons and deals throughout the day so that way all of our businesses really uh, receive the support of the attendees who are at this event. So um, some other ways in which you can participate or we're inviting people to participate is through our committees, um, volunteering opportunities, internship opportunities, or even just contacting us directly at info at openartsmusic.com. That's actually a core part of all of the programming that we do at Glendale Arts, which is we constantly ask, what do you want to see in your community? What's important to you? And how can we help make that happen? So just some info on our committees. The options uh, are arts, food and drink, marketing and outreach, planning, or you can sign up for more than one if you're really interested. And it is open, so you're welcome to invite anyone who wants to join our committees. So where we are now is we're meeting regularly with Glendale Fire Department, Glendale Police Department, Public Works, and facilities to ensure that we have a safe event. We received a grant from the Los Angeles County Arts Commission for a summer arts internship, which is a full-time paid position that is unique to our county, and we're really grateful to receive this award. We have finalized our candidate, and we'll announce who this person is next week. We are reaching out to local high schools, groups, and colleges for volunteer support, and this is a critical part of our event. Uh, we're, you know, we're an arts organization, we're a nonprofit, and we're very much all hands on deck, and so if anyone is interested in volunteering with us, please do contact us. And then a quick note is that our 2017 talent is about 70% booked, including our headliner. And so we're just awaiting notice from the final few selections before we make our public announcement in early June. So thank you again for listening to my presentation today. If you have any questions, I'm glad to take them. You're welcome to reach me directly. Um, and thank you again for your time. We hope to see you at the event and invite you to participate by joining our team, our planning committees, and or inviting folks to participate as a vendor. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Fantastic. Nice report. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say that thank you for coming and, and presenting to us in detail and very happy to see that it's it's gone on the second year, and it's expanding, and I see the number of sponsors have expanded, uh, and I think it's going to be a good event this year, so I wish you luck with that. Thank you. Much appreciated. Next item. Item four, oral communications, and we have no blue cards. We don't have any. Next item, then. Item five, business agenda at 5A, information item. At 5A1, update on Arts and Culture Commission project updates. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Oshigan and Commissioners. My name is Sharon Mann Garrett. I'm the Principal Library Arts and Culture Administrator. Um, the, my first report is to update you on projects from your work plan. Uh, in September of 2015, the City Council approved the 2015-2017 work plan of the Arts and Culture Commission and appropriated $380,000 to accomplish the activities detailed in the plan. 
Uh, work from this plan will continue into 2017, 2018, as several of the projects continue to have funding and are ongoing. The following updates are programs from the work plan which have had recent activity. And at the end, um, some of the, I'll mention the projects that haven't had that much activity, but just wanted to update you on where they're at. Uh, the first one uh, I'd like to talk about is the Public Art Master Plan, uh, which is probably one of the, the key projects of the Arts and Culture Commission this year. On February 9, 2016, the Arts and Culture Commission issued a request for proposals to complete a citywide plan for the responsible and effective deployment of the Urban Art Fund. The fund, now totaling approximately $6 million, is as a result of developer uh, inputs for public art. A flurry of new developments over the past few years has contributed greatly to this fund. The Public Art Master Plan should provide expert counsel on the most impactful, fiscally responsible, effective, and sustainable ways in which the Urban Art Fund can be utilized for public art to enhance the city of Glendale. After a thorough vetting process, the Arts and Culture Commission recommended Cars Goldstein uh, to complete the public art master plan with the with the a budget of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, the city the city council moved to approve the selection and budget on December sixth, twenty sixteen. On February first, twenty seventeen, staff received Cars Goldstein's contract draft, including an instrument defining the Cars Cars Goldstein legal relationship. The agreements were fully executed on March twenty eighth, twenty seventeen. And the project will launch with a deep dive research um, initiative and a visit from Ms. Goldstein beginning um, actually today. We're having our first meeting with Cars Goldstein today. And uh, Ms. Goldstein will begin meeting with city staff on June the 7th. Her, first, her initial meetings will be with executives from throughout the city, including public works, community development, parks and, and community services, uh, finance, and management services, and, and others. CARS will also hold its first community engagement exercise at the Glendale Atwater Seek La Via, which is uh, scheduled for June 11, 2017. That is a uh, very fun and lively event that lots of people come out to, so it's a great opportunity for them to capitalize on a, on a nice, captive, and, and uh, engaged crowd. The next project that I'd like to update you on is our AHA program. That is our pop-up arts. Um, AHA stands for Arts happens anywhere, and the pro program is in its inaugural year. It's de designed to inject interesting and interactive experiential art, such as storytelling, music, dance, and street art, in interior and exterior pedestrian-friendly districts throughout the city. The program is designed to complement the city's 18-hour city initiative, which encourages upgraded lifestyle experiences for urban residents and visitors to Glendale. The program uh, is intended to foster a sense of excitement and discovery. A request for proposals for the AHA program was issued in November 2016, and artists may submit until the funding has been exhausted. To date, 19 submissions have been, have been received for review, and two submissions past the initial screening and are being developed in cooperation with the artists and affected city departments. Um, I'd like to add that many of the submissions uh, may qualify for other Arts and Culture Commission programs, especially traditional performance art and fine art exhibitions. Uh, these are many wonderful projects were uh, proposed for AHA. However, they don't fit the AHA criteria of being unexpected art in unexpected places. In other words, they were art that would be expected in the places that they propo that pro proposed to have them. So uh, some of them are being referred uh, to look for upcoming calls for the Brand Plaza Series, 22 East, Adams Square Mini Park, and Brand Library and Arts Center calls. The, one, the first proposal under development is entitled Word on the Street, and it's by artist Scott Frosher. Paraphrasing the artist, by utilizing the materials and visual language of street signs, but replacing the restrictive language, for example, stop or don't enter, with positive affirmations like go or do enter. Uh, the goal of this work is to surprise and delight viewers by giving them positive and reassuring messages in an ironically familiar format. The artist has finalized his proposal and locations according to the rules and guidelines developed by community service and parks and traffic and transportation. Library and arts and culture staff has visited each location and verified that they comply with the rules and guidelines. Staff uh, has presented to the Parks Commission as of just uh, last Monday to get their guidance before proceeding, and I'm happy to say that they were very enthusiastic in their support 
Um, they're very, very happy about it and um, actually proposed additional locations beyond the ones that the artist proposed. They thought it was a great project and um, they're very much looking forward to seeing those um, signs installed. Uh, so the next step is to begin negotiating a, a contract with the artist. The second proposal under development is entitled Out of Circulation by artist Heidi Duckler Dance Company. The company will create a dance performance piece entirely on site at the renovated Central Library, letting the history, culture, architecture, stories, and accoutrement of this space inform the creative work. Artistic director Heidi Duckler will bring together a cast of dancers between, between four to eight dancers and Glendale based musicians to create the new work. All of Duckler's rehearsals will be carried out inside the open library throughout a three week public engagement program with a final performance free and open to the public. The project budget for that is $6,000. The next project I'll tell you about is one that Chuck has already reviewed um, for you um, in some detail, so I won't um, read this whole thing. But uh, the Arts and Culture Commission uh, approved a budget of $20,000 in spending for entertainment at the new downtown Central Library. Of the entertainment budget, 5000 was slated for the grand reopening event on May 1st and a Tech Arts and Culture Night, which, which will be held on October the 11th. Grand reopening crowds were greeted by popular mariachi divas when downtown Central's doors reopened to the public at 9.30 on May 1st. Entertainment for, entertainment for kids of all ages continued throughout the day with an audience participation concert by One World Music and a fun bubble mania show. The day ended with swing music and dancing in the library with the John Reynolds Quartet. The, the Tech Arts and Culture Night, which was originally planned to follow the grand reopening, has been postponed to coincide with the citywide Tech Week in October, so entertainment for that event will be booked later in the summer. The remaining $15,000 has been designated to create a performing arts series on the new Downtown Central's Front Porch Plaza. Um, Mr. Chuck White did uh, review our initial lineup for that series, and we're very excited about it. Just a little bit of background. Um, Axe will be paid a flat $500 for $200 perform for two-hour performances on the plaza, which will allow for a total of 30 performances. Uh, a call to, performer, to, for, to performers of all kinds was issued with the anticipation that a wide variety of performance art could be accommodated. Rather than our traditional committee review of artists, Commissioner De Hovnesian and Library Department staff held an open audition day on April 14th at the Brown Library and Arts Center Recital Hall. And it was really a fun uh, day to do the uh, auditions that way. Uh, we're really looking forward to our next uh, set of auditions and opening those to the public at our auditorium because it, became, it was an event in and of itself. 35 acts signed up to audition and of those 15 are being offered performance dates this summer. The first performance is June the 3rd. A diverse range of live acts will appear this summer, including a spoken word poet, two jazz ensembles, a folk music quartet, opera singers, a classical piano and clarinet duo, an R&B band, a hillbilly band, an American, and an Armenian songbook harpist and, and flutist. The next round of auditions will be offered late this summer uh, when the fall season performances will be booked. Staff plans to aggressively recruit an even more diverse lineup of performers, especially dance and hip hop music, which is missing from the current live, uh, lineup. Those editions will be held again at Downtown Central in our all new auditorium and they'll be open to the public. Uh, the next will be just really brief updates. The Brand Plaza series, as Chuck told you, is, is underway. All the acts are booked and they, they are listed here in this report. The next project, um, Adam Square uh, Gas Station, has, has also uh, received uh, an installation on April 29th that continues through July 28th. Uh, the artist, Janet Charles, said, reminiscent of the prehistoric Venus figurines such as Venus of, of Tape Serub and Venus of Willendorf, Venus of Adam Square is a curvaceous fertility goddess-like sculpture. The Venus is made of scraps of visually captivating colorful textiles and secondhand clothing, which are sewn together and stuffed. Completing the installation are suspended abstract flowers of textile pieces, which represent the abundance of yellow flowers and blossoms in the park. It's quite striking if you'd like to go and take a look at it. It's, it's, it's on view. Um, it's, you can see it at any time of day or night. The next project I wanted to uh, update you on is Painted Crosswalks, which is something we've been talking about for a while. This project has proven more labor-intensive and costly than we anticipated. 
Potential locations are still being proposed and vetted for costs. However, cost-effective installations have not proven to provide the impact staff and the commissioners were seeking. The public art master plan may help inform staff on how to proceed responsibly with this initiative or whether or not to, to abandon it altogether. And that concludes that report of information only. Yes, of course. Um, there's a question and a comment. Uh, first, I want to clarify about the beyond the box. This is not what you said at this point, but I want to clarify. Some people don't understand, including my husband. He was saying that some of the work are so artistic and some are not. And I explained this is the aim is not to be the professional artist to do the work. It is to have the community getting involved, people of different ages, so they would own uh, those utility box artwork. So that is the clarification I thought necessary. If my husband made a mistake, so most probably some people don't. So that's number one. Now the question I have is that with the performance on the uh, thing, the area on the steps, so people who are going to basically watch it are going to be people who are on the Harvard, right? So is there a chance that on the day of the performance we could kind of block the street so people could really uh, stand there and enjoy it because I'm worried that if the cars pass by and if those fantastic programs that we have chosen, kind of it might be a little bit uh, distracting. Is there a way we can do that? Actually, to close the streets is, is highly costly. Um, it's, um, it, it requires um, a considerable um, activity by our public works department. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that because the uh, parking lot is across the street, most of the traffic will head into the parking lot and, and perhaps not traverse uh, where our performances are. Um, there's a lot of sidewalk right there, so we do feel that um, we'll have good enough sound there. So, uh, But again, we're a work in progress. This will be our first time. Um, we, are, we did um, book uh, our most clamorous acts for the beginning um, uh, bookings to, just to make sure that that sound would not be an issue. Um, but if we do find that sound is an issue, we'll probably respond with, with a new solution to move the series indoors or, um, as you said, to pursue um, a way to cut down on the traffic going by. Or even we can have it if if it causes, because I think it was beautiful the day we walked in for the opening event. But if we could move it to the other section that is towards Lewis, kind of if it happens, then people can bring their folding chairs and can use the grass area as well. But we have to see how it works, because really the, the uh, performances that were chosen were phenomenal. I'm sure it's going to attract a lot of attention from the, and the location of Central Library is such that um, it is in the heart of Glendale. So I'm sure it's going to be, a lot of people are going to be there. And the performances are from 2 to 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, which is high peak pedestrian time um, in the downtown for shopping. Um, so we're, we're really excited about this opportunity, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're putting together a pretty airtight plan for getting our artists in and out, making sure that they have you know, adequate parking so they can see their, um, their instruments and their, their equipment as they're loading in and loading out. Uh, we've designated staff to assist them every Saturday. And uh, the, the whole library is, is rallying together to make sure that this performance series is, is just phenomenal for the public. It's really too exciting. I, I cannot wait till the time comes. <laughs> well, I'm very proud of all the things that our library and our city and our community does. This is fantastic. You have anything for no. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, item. Item 5B, action item at 5B. 5B2, motion requesting that City Council take a position on the proposed funding cut of NEA, National Endowment for the Arts. Again, um, again I'm Sharon Mann Garrett, your Principal <laughs> Administrator for Library Arts and Culture. I just want to go back on the record on that as this is a very different um, report. Uh, the National Endowment for the Arts, as you know, um, is an organization that funds a lot of art activity in our region. Uh, members of the Arts and Culture Commission requested a public discussion on the proposed federal funding cut for the NEA, which may include a motion requesting that the City Council take a position opposing the proposed funding cut of NEA. Staff assembled information and news articles on the NEA activities and funding and President Trump's um, fiscal year 2018 budget proposal that calling for the elimination of NEA funding. This discussion took place at the April 
2017 meeting of the commission. The commissioner's uh, discussion resulted in a request for more information regarding NEA and its impact on Glendale, which is detailed in this report. Uh, the, the National Endowment for the Arts is an independent federal agency that was created in 1965 to invest in the arts and culture. The agency has distributed most of its budget to regional, state, and local arts agencies and organizations around the country and the U.S. territories. A federal budget proposal put forth by President Trump pledged to zero, zero out funding for the NEA along with the National Endowment for Humanities, Institution of Museum and Library Services, and other agencies. The President's proposal includes uh, budget cuts, more than $54 billion in cuts to domestic programs in one year alone. If funding for the NEA is terminated, music, dance, theater, literature, visual arts may become less widely accessible, especially in schools, rural areas, and poorer communities. A search of the NEA grants database revealed that $90,000 in NEA grants have been dispersed to entities in Glendale from 2000 to April 2017. The most recent was an individual fellowship in 2012 and a grant to the Museum of Neon Art in 2009. Uh, three other grants went to the Alex Theater prior to that. Understanding that Glendale is served by a larger arts community, staff also searched for grants awarded by NEA in a 15-mile radius of the downtown. In total, NEA supported arts organization in that region with a total of um, over $32 million in funding from the year 2000 to April 2017. Noteworthy, noteworthy organizations that serve Glendale that were supported by NEA grants are the American Film Institute, which is just over the hill in Los Feliz, uh, the Autry National Center, which is just down the road um, near us, Arts for LA, which is an organization that, that we belong to, Cal State University Los Angeles, which is a really important uh, educational institute that, that, uh, that services our community. Uh, Los Angeles County Arts Commission, which is uh, of, of which we are under their umbrella. Uh, the Fil Film Independent Incorporated, Inner City Arts, which is a, a wonderful um, arts institution in downtown LA that serves yeah, a, a really burgeoning um, art population. And LA Chamber Orchestra, Los Angeles Master Chorale, LA Philharmonic, Museum of Contemporary Art, Plaza de la Raza, UCLA, Southern California Institute of Architecture, and others. Um, attached to this report are all the organizations that have been funded by the NEA within a 15-mile radius of Glendale. Um, because of our adjacency to Hollywood, um, you'll see that a lot of these organizations are uh, performance art-based, theater-based, um, media arts, etc. Um, the, the sheer magnitude of this list does um, indicate that a cut of NEA funding um, will definitely impact Glendale significantly. So uh, staff concludes that NEA impact on the arts in Glendale and surrounding communities is very significant. If NEA funding were to be discontinued in 2018, Glendale residents may be impacted with fewer opportunities to experience the arts and culture in our region. A motion is requested that the Arts and Culture Commission recommend that the City Council state a position that opposes the proposed federal budget cut. So question. there are any questions or comments? Um, I just wanted some clarity. Um, so I think the impacts of, I know that there, were, there was a proposal to cut all funding for NEA, but I believe a spending bill was passed that increased funding by $2 million. That was That's status? for the current uh, fiscal year. The, the cut is for the next fiscal year. Okay. And my understanding is that the current fiscal year did get an increase in funding, but the uh, proposed cut for the subsequent fiscal year is still, still on standing. the table. I have Any a question. Questions? I have a question. Um, didn't we propose last time that we include not only NEA, but the, what is this, the Institute for Museum and Library Services in this, um, in this motion? I thought. No, we did not propose that. Um, however, we can definitely include that. Um, that, that was not part of what the uh, commission asked staff to do. If there are no other questions, I would like to make a motion. Well, yeah, let me say a couple of things. So last time, my two commissioners were on this side of me. 
and then this time two commissioners are on this side. Um, so, and one of the reasons we didn't uh, actually, we went back and we wanted more information and we didn't actually uh, make a decision on this proposal was because the whole, the whole commission was not uh, present. That was my particular, particularly important for me. So now I think uh, the commission is still not completely present and, and the person who's actually proposed the, the motion is not here either. So I think um, I would like to propose that we, uh, we postpone it one more week, one more month, and hopefully next month all five of commissioners will be present, at least four, and then we can um, make a decision and make a, um, a vote on this proposal. I'm fine with that if everybody else accepts and if it's okay. Well, I'd like to assert that um, at least one of the commissioners was, was very much in favor of you making the motion opposing the budget cut. So um, in absentia, I believe her vote would be that you go ahead and, and make the motion. So where are we standing now? Well, I think... Um, I think let's see what Michael has some... We have a proposal, then... It is at the Commission's pleasure. If the Commission wants it to postpone it until next month, certainly the Commission can do that. I would recommend that to my Commissioners. I'm not sure what your opinion would be. And I just might say, I'm personally in favor of it. I think we should do it. We should propose it. And I think we should add the library services um, into this, uh, into the proposal um, into this motion, I guess it's a motion. Um, but I wouldn't want to uh, pass this without everybody being here. I think we won't lose anything if we'll wait for a month. If that really you strongly believe that we need to look back into whatever there is and there needs to be some modification or addition, that would be fine if we could postpone it for the next meeting, but make sure that we'll put it on the agenda because I notice nobody else says anything. It seems that we are all kind of in the same line as um, our chair. So if it's okay legally, so we can postpone it, right? The yeah, motion would be brought by one of <clears throat> the commissioners and then... Okay. I, I mean, I think personally it's... Uh, I think the National Endowment of, uh, for the Arts is very important. Um, and I think if it was pressing for the current budget year, I would, I would hate to lose time uh, because I think our voice should be heard. Um, I know Los Angeles City Council um, passed a resolution previously, um, but if, if assuming this is now we're talking about the next fiscal year, and there's a little bit more time, I'd be comfortable with waiting till uh, next meeting. But uh, we probably can't delay it any further beyond that. Is there any time constraint on that? No. Let's make a motion to take this for the next meeting and discuss it and finalize it. And might you make a motion to add the, uh, some discussion about the impact of the library? Um, that we can discuss next time, I suppose. Would we need to make that two separate motions, or should that be part of? I believe you need two motions, one to delay. Um, th no? OK. Well, then one motion to delay your discussion and your recommendation to the city council to next week and to um, add the discussion of the, the cut to the library um, organization for that. But for, for next meeting, would that be two separate motions that we would need, or can that be merged into one resolution? Yes. Okay. We can move to add the library services. This is for museum and library services to the motion. Yeah. Can yes. I just clarify, um, yes. are we talking about library services in the region or library services in Glendale? Because if it's in the region, that might be a little more difficult to track down. We can definitely tell you about Glendale um, and the impact of, of the any cuts to IMLS. But I'm no, not sure I, we I can gather that all. No, all I, I mean, okay. I think it would be Glendale. Clearly, the impact would be huge. I mean, uh, yeah. But yeah, just Glendale, just I Glendale. think, would be sufficient. Okay. That's fine. I'll be, be more than happy to summarize the impact of Glendale, and if there is something I can find on the region, I'll throw that in. Okay. Yes. So we need a motion from one of you. 
to. So is the motion to move to move the item to next meeting then? Yes. To, to postpone it as well to add uh, the library. Uh, so I move to from museum and library services. Yeah. Post one item one to the next meeting, and also if staff can come back with uh, additional information on the museum and libraries piece as well. And I'll second it. Commissioner Dervonesian. Yes. Sahakian. Yes. Chairperson Oshigan. Yes. Item six. Commission staff comments. I have a comment and a question. Uh, in the library, um, uh, as far as it's a beautiful big space, so but we have only one little hallway for any kind of art exhibits. And I know that if we are going to put some railings to be able to hang, it would be costly. Is there a way that the commission can financially uh, pay for it or do something to add on the railing that in case there needs to be a, an art exhibit as well, we would have enough space. Can we do that? Um, we can, but a little good news, we do have a railing and we do have a hanging system, so um, we are um, working with the architect to make sure that we understand how it works, but yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think at this point there's a need. Okay, thank you, because I was very really concerned. I thought, why not well, to have that? Excellent. That's good news. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? No, it's just the fact that the library is beautiful. I want our young people and the young in heart as well to use the reading spa, not the other spa, <laughs> reading spa, because, you know, people go to coffee shops and then they complain that other people come for social things and they talk loud and etc. so they hush them. This is a beautiful, serene, excellent view, beautiful space, so to utilize it because it's fantastic. The Thank conference you. rooms you can book. And, and use them for free. Yes, you conference don't have to buy any rooms, coffee. <laughs> fantastic ones. People who live in uh, noisy, cr uh, crowded apartments can come and do their studying time. But I heard that we need to make an appointment to use the time. But it is phenomenal, beautiful. Even there are TVs in the room, in those conference rooms for different purposes as well. And the copy machines, I was very, very excited about them because the 3D copiers, this is phenomenal. It's like, and the activity room, and there's go, there are going to be people. There's so much about that library that it is so alive and so exciting that I need to, I think, quit because I can't talk till tomorrow about it. <laughs> Okay. Item seven, written communications. I have none. Don't have any? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs>